Yeah. 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 Yeah
I didn't even get a chance to talk to him. Yes, I did, two weeks ago. How did you get into flying? My husband got me into it. When you marry Steve Whitman, you have to fly. <laughs> so, um, what do you like best about it? It's exciting. And of course, if he should lose his license, then he can fly with me. Or I still be flying with him, most likely, but uh, it, it covers both ends, so to speak of. What are your dreams as far as flying? Well, we fly to Oshkosh in a couple of weeks, so that's a pretty long trip. We fly nonstop from here, and uh, that's the farthest trip we've taken. And uh, in between, we have so many other things to do. We don't always have time to fly. What else but do you do? well, Steve is always working on something. He's always designing something, and you know, and he's not as fast as he used to be. So he takes longer, <laughs> and we have a lot of company and two homes. Where are your homes? Uh, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and here. What place do you like better? We don't know. We like it here when we're here, and we like it there when we're there. So we have we won't make a decision until, if we have to, we will. But uh, as long as we don't have to, we just keep traveling. Tell me about your husband. What, what uh, just drew you to him? I knew him for a long time because his uh, wife was a good friend of mine and she passed away. And that's how I knew him, of course, for many years. And I got divorced a few years ago. And for some reason or other, we got together. Well, he just did his turnaround to clear the airport, and uh, now he's on his takeoff roll, and he's up in the air. He's going to keep it. He's, he's going to keep it right on the deck here, so he'll be coming by here, probably doing 150 miles an hour. Well, he'll be just accelerating. Of course, he's not climbing right now, but as he passes, uh, he will do a pull-up. So he'll want to. And there's the V wet. Sorry about that. How's that for an old man, huh? <laughs> He's gonna do an air flow, so stay with him. He's doing a hammerhead turn. This is a turn that crop dusters use to uh, make a very short radius turn so they could come down through the next row of beans. We'll do another pull up here at the end of the runway. <laughs> He's trading speed for altitude here. See, well, he's using his energy, and now he's. One of his favorite maneuvers is called a falling leaf, and I think he might be doing this. It's kind of a side to side airplane. It looks just like a leaf falling, obviously. A very difficult maneuver to to uh, do. Actually, it takes a great deal of coordination with the tail surfaces and the wing surfaces. So well, you don't see aerobatic pilots doing it very often. And he still can master it. Simple little turn. Obviously, he's going to be gaining some speed now. Doing a pylon turn, just as this is a demonstration race. This is about the same altitude that the airplanes race at, and they're normally flying on a two mile course. So, this is about 50 feet off the ground. 
uh, is a normal race course. Of course, you'd normally have chasing airplanes, so, and I do mean chasing because he's usually in the lead. He's using the trees here, of course, as a pylon. And in these turns, uh, he's experiencing four to five Gs. So that's a lot of Gs, and 80 years old, there aren't many people that can experience that. Sorry, 90. Swing it up for another turnaround, and he's just keeping it right over the runway here. He'll be kicking a rudder right about now. The airplane's ready to stall, and he's doing what is called a hammerhead. Again, the nose pointing down. You can really hear the engine turning now. That engine, the propeller is turning about 4,000 RPMs right now. Nice, simple little zoom. Going on the course again. <laughs> All of his other racers are in museum, so this is the, the last of his racers flying. You see the plan form of this wing as it turns. The tapered tips allow him to carry the speed in the turns so that he doesn't lose anything on the competition. <laughs> 